I shall die. But that is all I shall do for death. I hear him leading his horse out of the stall. I hear the clatter of the barn floor. He is in haste. He has business in Cuba. Business in the Balkans. Many calls to make this morning. But I will not hold the bridle while he clinches the girth. And he may mount by himself. I will not give him a leg up. Though he flick my shoulders with his whip, I will not tell him which way the fox ran. With his hoof at my breast, I will not tell him where the black boy hides in the swamp. I shall die, but that is all I shall do for death. I am not on his payroll. I will not tell him the whereabouts of my friends, nor of my enemies either. Though he promised me much, I will not map the route to any man's door. I am a spy in the land of the living that I should deliver men to death. Brother, the password and the plans of our city are safe with me. Never through me shall you be overcome. Edna St. Vincent Millay Mel Gibson is an all-time old-fashioned Hollywood protege, a certifiably insane man who has managed to channel that insanity into some fascinating pieces of art. As an actor, he is famous for portraying some of the most famous characters in movie history, and as a director, he has proven himself to be the master of emotional investment. He is a truly skillful, talented artist, and I will always admire his work. Having said that, he is also a guy that I am pretty sure I would not really get along with. See, part of the reason that he's so certifiable is because he is a massive, die-hard, self-abusing Catholic. His dad is one of those morons who insists that the Holocaust never happened. And up until recently, Mr. Gibson has been dealing with a rather severe incident that kind of painted him in a very different light. I don't love you. I don't want you. Okay? Okay. Stay in the f house. I'm not giving it to you, but I'll let you stay there. Yeah, that actually happened. Needless to say, as much as I still enjoy Mel Gibson's work, I've never really been able to like Mel Gibson himself. And frankly, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I have always been, and always shall be, of the firm opinion that it is more important to separate the art from the artist than it is to judge the art based upon the artist. Art is a separate living thing in and of itself in its own way, and as such, deserve to only be judged strictly on their own merits. Understand, this is not in any way a means of encouraging you to suddenly like the artist because they make good work. No, far from it. It's just to say that, in my opinion, it is more important to admire the art for what it is and how good it is, regardless of who created it. To paraphrase Duke Ellington, if it's good, it's good. Whatever else can be said about Mel Gibson, there is no denying that he has a great amount of talent, and he clearly has a deep, strong passion for storytelling, both as director and as an actor. And frankly, I find it very refreshing to see Mel Gibson step back into the director's chair for what is arguably one of the best films of the year. Hacksaw Ridge follows the story of one Private Desmond Doss, played by Andrew Garfield. During World War II, Desmond Doss became an army medic, but was listed as a conscientious objector meaning he had no problem going overseas to help the boys in the battle, but he refused to kill anyone, let alone even hold a gun. Because of this, the army was very anxious to kick him out, seeing as how they didn't think that anyone refusing to carry a rifle would be any good use to them. However, after some careful deliberation, the army finally granted Desmond Doss's request and allowed him to go to the front lines without so much as a weapon to defend himself with. He was then sent to Okinawa, where, in an act of true heroism, rescued 75 wounded soldiers, both American and Japanese, by himself by rappelling him down the ridge one at a time, all the while praying to himself, please help me get one more. And for his actions, he became one of the few conscientious objectors to be awarded the Medal of Honor. Now, before I give my overall impression on the movie, I'd like to make something very clear. 
I am an agnostic, and as an agnostic, I do not confirm nor deny any particular iteration of the concept of God. My general take on religion can best be summed up in the words of the late great George Carlin. Religion is like a lift in your shoe. If you need it, good. Just don't make me wear your shoes if I don't want them. I have no problem with people practicing certain religious beliefs that they choose. I have a problem with people using those religious beliefs to justify very inhumane actions. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! But by the same token, I personally greatly appreciate people who use their religious beliefs as an excuse and a means of justification for really good actions. Jesus was a liberal in substantial and important ways. Why has the liberal voice been so muted in Christianity? See, liberal Christians exist. Therefore, as an agnostic and as a human being, Desmond Doss is a person who I greatly admire. Anyone who has the guts to do what he did for whatever reason motivated him, be it religious or personal, or in Mr. Dossman's case, it was both, deserves to be recognized as a hero in my book. Also as an agnostic and a human being, while religious and personal reasons were a big factor in why Desmond Doss did what he did, I am happy to say that the movie itself doesn't really push that. And what I mean by that is that the movie makes it abundantly clear that the religious aspects of Desmond Doss's choice were purely his own. The movie does not in any way insist that you have to take up Doss's religion in order to have his convictions. It just simply encourages you to have faith in yourself and your own convictions, whatever they may be, and however you choose to channel them. Now, having said all of that, how is the actual movie? Really damn good. This movie hits all the right notes in all the right ways and for all the right reasons. It both showcases this real hero and the actions he did that made him a hero, and it also does a good job at showcasing the true hell of war, or at least as well as it possibly could given this medium. It doesn't glorify war, it doesn't justify the war, and it doesn't justify anyone's reasons for thinking they have to go to war. It just shows the hell of war and what our soldiers go through. And it does so in a way that it's not preachy. Andrew Garfield does a remarkable job as the lead. Not only does he look the part pretty well, but he damn well plays the part. Mel Gibson's direction of this film feels, for want of a better phrase, old-fashioned, but in a very good way. Gibson knows how to move the camera along with the scene and where to put it and what lens to put on there and how to... Uh, make it move to better fit the mood. Gibson loves character-driven stories. He loves making points with his films. He loves making movies that are so unbelievably amazing to look at that you can't look away even when it gets really scary. And trust me, there are plenty of moments, especially during the battle scenes, where it gets freaky. Remember how effective and invigorating the Normandy fight scene in Saving Private Ryan was? It's just like that. It gets bloody, it gets gory, it gets scary for really good reasons, because war is exactly like that. Now, Hacksaw Ridge is not a movie for everyone. Like I said, the battle scenes get very graphic, and justifiably so, and that may be too much for some people to handle, particularly in a movie theater. So if you were able to handle the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to handle this. And again, regardless of who made the movie, the movie itself is so incredibly good and so unbelievably effective that I can't help but give it my full endorsement. Please go see this movie, and please remember that it ultimately doesn't matter why Desmond Doss did what he did. All that really matters is he had the courage and the desire to save lives rather than take lives. And that is, at least in my opinion, the bravest thing any human being could ever want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Norm, telling you what Hollywood doesn't want you to hear. Thank you for watching. You can't always win. But when your buddies come to you and say they owe their life to them, what better reward can you get than that?